Hey everyone, uh, I think now you can all hear me okay. Uh, we had um, our crew uh, in the studio, uh, had obviously some technical difficulties and we are doing this remotely and so uh, it's okay. And it, uh, these things kind of happen. So I just wanna make sure most importantly that we are able to uh, provide all the information that everybody can hear it. So we're gonna, I'm gonna take it from the top um, and I want our crew uh, out there to know that they've been working very, very hard throughout this entire pandemic and that it's okay. And so uh, no worries, we're gonna get through this whole thing. Um, so we're gonna just start over and, uh, and we're gonna help with the Long Beach Recovery Act. And so um, my name is Robert Garcia and I'm the mayor and I know folks are joining back on to, uh, to the call right now. Uh, and so I wanna thank you all for joining us. What we're gonna present today um, is uh, a really important uh, piece of legislation and proposal that we are presenting to the Long Beach City Council. Uh, and I want to thank our city team, first and foremost, for their incredible work. I also want to thank our partners uh, within the Biden administration who helped get the support and the funding for this plan, uh, our partners at LA County who did a lot uh, to get us here. Um, and I want to thank, of course, everyone across the city. There, believe it or not, there have been over 20 roundtables, particularly around uh, economic development, um, around supporting nonprofits that have gotten us to this Long Beach Recovery Act that we're presenting today. And so I wanna thank all of them and we're very, very grateful. I also wanna thank everyone that's been involved in ensuring uh, that we have a response to this crisis uh, that meets the moment that we're in today. Uh, and so I wanna just begin by uh, taking us back one more time uh, to uh, a year ago uh, today. Now, one year ago today, we had our first case of COVID-19. So if you can believe that, that was one year ago now in March to this day. And just a few days after that, we had our school district, which began closing down our schools. And just seven days after, from that first case, we had the closure of the economy. Now, there is no question that this is the most difficult challenge that Long Beach has ever faced. And it's also been the biggest threat to life in our city's history. Almost 860 folks have died of our family members and our neighbors. And it's been devastating to our economy, as we know, as well as to our schools and so many young people across our city. Now, during this challenge, a bold and responsible response was necessary around testing. And that's something that we did right away. Uh, your city became a massive testing operation immediately. Uh, we began testing up to 5,000 people a day. There were more than 715,000 COVID tests that we administered. And the great news is that hospitalizations also came down from the peak of the surge. And our positivity rate came down below 2.9%. And it was over 17% at its peak. And so there was really uh, some great changes that have happened. So not only, of course, did testing become something that was a model. And we began testing all over the city. We began going into hard to reach locations. We immediately shifted once vaccines were ready to a massive vaccine operation uh, and really became, I think, a national and statewide model around vaccinations. Now, believe it or not, we've done over 132,000 doses of vaccine. 68%, uh, almost 70% now, of all seniors in Long Beach have been vaccinated. Now that's actually higher than our neighbors in both Orange County and in LA County. We've also offered thousands of appointments to our food and grocery workers, and we've completed nearly all of our educators and school staff. And we're really proud of this because we became the first uh, really health jurisdiction anywhere in the state uh, to start vaccinating Cal State Long Beach faculty, Long Beach City faculty and staff, and of course our Long Beach Unified Educators and our independent schools. And in fact, we will be our first camp, first uh, school district um, that's, that's large in the state to open campuses on March the 29th. And also just today, we're gonna be the first jurisdiction in the state to begin vaccinating people with disabilities. And that's something that we're really, really proud of. Now, the great thing is that what we're presenting today is a plan now on how we move forward. Uh, we've been testing, we've been vaccinating. And thanks to the support now of the Senate and the House, uh, President Biden, who will sign the bill this upcoming week, uh, and of course, our partners in the county, we are presenting and putting together this Long Beach Recovery Act. It is a $207 million plan 
to get our city moving and to build back better. There are three components to this plan. Economic recovery, a healthy and safe community, and securing our city's future. And I'm gonna talk about all three of these uh, as part of this master plan. Um, and I wanna start with the area that is probably the one that we hear being discussed the most. Uh, it's being discussed within our, within our business community, uh, at the dining room table with workers, and that's how we bounce back from an economic perspective. What does our economic recovery actually look like? And we know that businesses and workers have been devastated throughout this pandemic. And it's been a difficult time as so many of our small business owners have had to lay folks off, folks have had to go to unemployment, and we've had to recover and look at creative ways of coming back stronger. Now, this economic recovery plan, the piece of the Long Beach Recovery Act is a $51 million part of the plan. It includes $13 million for testing, contact tracing, and support for businesses and for workers. This is critical. The number one thing we heard from the business community was we need support to ensure that our workers are tested, that we are safe, and that people feel safe within our restaurants or our gyms or our small businesses and retailers. In addition to that, we've got significant support for other parts of our package. This includes 5 million to restaurants, breweries, and bars, and 5 million to personal services and fitness centers. Now, we know that these two combined are, are, have already been adopted by the Long Beach City Council and the incredible work of so many on that body. But we're also adding an additional $4 million to additional nonprofits that also need support and to arts organizations. We're putting in $3.5 million for fee waivers so that some of those fees that rack up for businesses and nonprofits can be dismissed and taken care of by the city. We also have $2 million for our business improvement districts. These are organizations like the Bixby Mills Improvement Association, like the Downtown uh, Long Beach Business Alliance, uh, like all the associations all across the city that do so much work across our city, like in Belmont Shore and so many other places. And we have $1.25 million for the tourism sector so we can bring back such a critical part of our Long Beach economy, which is tourism. In addition, we're putting together $8 million to digital and economic inclusion. Uh, economic inclusion within our economic recovery is incredibly important. This includes $2.5 million for economic empowerment zones, $2.5 million in small business development, and $2 million to address digital divide issues across our city, but especially in neighborhoods and communities that have less access to broadband computers and technology. So that will help us build computer centers, put in uh, Wi-Fi, put in the types of connections that are important for this community. And we're setting aside a million dollars for youth workforce development. So as we recover, we can ensure that young people are also part of this economic recovery. In addition to that, we've got something that I'm also very excited about. And that is a $5 million initiative to clean our city. Now, we all know, and something we've heard extensively from businesses, from neighbors, and from a lot of the folks that are working within our corridor improvement districts, is that during the COVID pandemic crisis, uh, the, the city itself has had less services. We know that to be true. There's been more trash as people have produced more trash in their homes. There have been less services on the street like street sweeping as furloughs have come in place and services have been reduced. And the amount of buildup and services has both increased on trash and decreased on the street sweeping side and abatement side. And so this initiative and major funding will help improvement and investment in corridor cleanups, trash and graffiti collection and abatement programs, and new business and neighborhood association cleanups. All of this is just some of the $51 million that we are setting aside to directly support small businesses within our community and our economic recovery. Now I wanna to talk to you about the second part of this Long Beach Recovery Act, and that's ensuring that we have a healthy and safe community. Now, this part of our plan is about $72 million, and it includes also incredible support for testing and contact tracing within our city and support for our health department. It also includes $5 million for health equity and health outreach programs. We wanna ensure as we grow back and recover 
that our health equity measures are in place all across the city so that we're, we're addressing inequity and that we're reaching communities all across and all our neighborhoods across the city of Long Beach. We've also put a million dollars additionally for important mental health programs that are necessary during this time. In addition to support our health department in our community, we're putting $7.4 million for food security and additional basic needs. Now this is significant and has been incredibly important to the Long Beach City Council. In fact, many of these issues that we're bringing up today have been brought forward by various council members and by committees of the City Council, as well as community organizations. And I wanna point out that the plan also includes significant funding over $2 million for additional early childhood education and childcare. Something we heard consistently from small businesses, from nonprofits, and so many in our community. And we have in this plan $29 million for tenant assistance. Now, something that is great about that is that's also coming directly from the federal government. We've talked about this tenant assistance program before, and it's gonna help so many renters that are facing eviction and they're looking to support as bills have racked up over the last few weeks and months. Now, remember, a lot of this money under health and safe community and in this part of the plan really addresses support for our nonprofits because it's gonna be our nonprofit partners that also do a lot of this work. I also wanna to talk to you about people experiencing homelessness. We've put in $12 million in this plan to address new modular temporary shelters, additional housing options for people experiencing homelessness, and to address mobile outreach restrooms and showers, as well as workforce and social enterprise programs. We have to ensure that people experiencing homelessness have access to shelter, to food, and to services. Now, we're already doing a lot in this area that we can do even more. And this Recovery Act addresses those issues. And I also want to touch on another important part of the Healthy and Safe Community Plan, and that is violence prevention and ensuring that our city is safe. Now, there is no question that violence across the city has increased. In fact, it is increasing across the country and across the state of California. The COVID-19 pandemic has created huge issues around the country, around violence, and around ensuring people are safe. Now, we already know that unemployment, the closure of many campuses of our schools, and other issues around folks not having access to services has caused issues around violence within our community and across the state and country. And so we wanna make sure that we address this head on. There are also challenges around, for example, the purchase of guns. Guns and illegal guns and their purchase have increased dramatically over the last year, not just in Long Beach, but across the country during this pandemic. And so we're putting aside additional resources to cre create a safe community with nonprofit partners and all of our city partners. That includes investments in our Be Safe Park programs. We're gonna fully fund programs across the city to ensure that there's programming in our parks. We're gonna bring back midnight basketball and programs like it across our city. We're gonna focus on re-entry pilot programs so that folks that are coming out of our prison system and our jail system have access to workforce training and jobs and invest back into community development programs. We think these are gonna be great support to the work that is being done through at the police department, our library system and our education system. So we're proud to support this part of our safe community initiative. And finally, the third piece of this recovery plan is about securing our city's future. And I wanna to talk to you about why this is so important. This is an $83 million piece of our plan and critical to our future success. I wanna start by talking to you about what might be one of the most important parts of this total plan. During the last year, we spent down $48 million of our city's reserves to address the COVID-19 pandemic, to address testing, to address vaccination, to address the loss of revenue from businesses being closed down. That has been a significant crisis for our city. We have essentially depleted our city's reserves. And thank God that we had a robust reserve program in place 
to address the emergency in front of us. In fact, I commend our current city council for always ensuring that we had robust reserves in place to address any emergency. And that emergency came in the last year. And so a huge part of this plan is to fully fund our reserves back to where they were pre-pandemic. And I can't express how important this is, that we have full reserves to meet the next emergency. And while I know it's always difficult to set money aside for a rainy day, we must set it aside for the next emergency so that we can address it like we've done this current one. The next part of our securing our city's future is also really important and exciting for us as a community. And that is structurally eliminating the FY 2022 budget deficit. As we all know, our deficit for the next budget cycle that would start later this year and go into all of next year was facing a $30 million deficit, largely in part to this COVID pandemic and its enormous impact on sales tax, on tourism dollars, on revenue coming in from all of our revenue sources across the city. And we've had to accelerate spending in many areas that we were not expecting to meet the serious crisis. What we don't wanna do is spend the next year debating how many services we're gonna cut, like librarians, like street sweeping, like trash pickup, while we're trying to recover. And so this plan eliminates the structural deficit for an entire year so we can get back to rebuilding our city stronger than ever. And the last piece of our securing our city's future is also ending our furloughs. Now we know that our city employees have been working really, really hard with furloughs in place to save money. But that also means that as a city, we're getting less services. And that means that a lot of the services that we're used to have been reduced across every single department in the city. And so we will also ensure that we end furloughs beginning in April and the full city can get back to work, processing permits, picking up trash, serving people experiencing homelessness, ensuring that all of our parks are fully staffed and that when folks need services from the city, we are here to deliver those services. So that together completes the Long Beach Recovery Act. Now it is a big plan. It certainly is uh, significant funding, but the great part about this is we all know it is a combination of funding that we're receiving from the American Rescue Plan that's passed now by Congress and LA County support that we've been advocating for through our county partners as well. And so this is money that's coming in that would not have been possible without the incredible support of these two partners. I also want to thank, of course, the governor for his support of our vaccination program and ensuring that we grow back and recover as best possible. Now, over the next week and days ahead, the city council will begin looking at this plan and we'll be discussing this next Tuesday to ensure that there is also robust community conversation. I also know that many council members are getting engaged with members of the community and we encourage that. So if the plan needs adjustments, we are also very open to that as well. But overall, it's something that we're very, very proud of. I wanna thank all of you for joining us. I wanna thank our tech team uh, for, making, uh, for making this work uh, and uh, for being so great on getting this presentation back on track. And I wanna thank most importantly, all of our nurses and our doctors and our health team that's out there working every single day taking on this pandemic. It remains the most serious threat to life in our city. It remains a very serious challenge for us as a community. We have to do everything we can to defeat it and ensure that our recovery is stronger than ever. So thank you all very much. Let's be hopeful about our future and go Long Beach. Thank you.